welcome to another edition of the Replay Theater. Got the worst matchup in the game? Pretty much how it works. Generally, it's like, yeah, whatever. Tegra Romani, terrible matchup. We're going to see how it works for these lovely ladies and gentlemen who are using the default colors. You don't see that very often. Oh, get armored. Too bad he doesn't have magnetism. That, yeah, it's a good burst. That would have 5C counter hit starter. He's in the air immediately, so you could do gadget finger whiffs. Not a, not a good time if you're, if you're anybody. Oh, he could have confirmed that into death. That was a nice rapid cancel. Because usually after that would come a sledge. And so you kind of just kind of preemptively start to block high on that one because hammer is an overhead. That was awkward. So when I said this is one of the worst matchups in the game, what I meant was that it's terrible for Amane, as we can see from that first round. I mean, it's just, it's, I think that's kind of the reason why I have managed to stick with Tager after, you know, for so long, is that he is a very polarizing character in his matchups, but like, he also has, I don't know, why would you do 5, like, I, I can understand doing the jab there and then going for a setup, but 5B? Oh, you fucked. Maybe. No, okay, yeah. I always. It always surprises me when I see overdrive uh, distortion damage. It always surprises me. But so, I mean, that's kind of. There are some matchups that, like, legitimately do feel hopeless. But then with Taker, you never really feel hopeless. Because he is the kind of character that you can take a game off of a single hit. And so it might be a bit of an uphill battle, but you have, you know, like, it's not an uphill battle from an offensive standpoint, only from defense and from getting your offense started. Whereas there are other characters, such as, you know, my constant punching bag bullet, who you just, you're running an uphill, you're running uphill with your offense the entire time. It's not just like, oh man, it's really tough to get this hit, it's really tough to get started, no, it just fucking sucks. Speaking of sucking, this Taukaka pressure right now? I can't believe that all combo. Dude, seriously, like... There's really nothing that should have probably been a kill. That's kind of how the character's always been. She's not really, like... Scary in the sense that you're worried about what's coming next, but, like... The concept of some characters is very simple, that they may not be the strongest on offense, they may not have insane mix-up, but no matter who you are, no matter how good you are, and no matter how, no matter who your opponent is, if you are stuck blocking for an extended period of time, you're gonna get touched eventually, and that's like how Taukaka is essentially designed, is like, you're just stuck there eating her offense for three days and sometime during the second day you're gonna eat a hit it's just how it works and it's insane to just see how long you're stuck there really without an option I wonder I bet if they had maybe they can still use it here I can't believe that all combo like didn't that start off an A? this is why I wish I could rewind but I was thinking the entire time, surely if they had done it, if they had confirmed into overdrive, that is so smart. Holy shit. That was so smart. I'm actually going to write this down. I'm going to write this person's PSN down. It's like BBMB KOF 57. All right. Holy shit. That was... I am impressed. That was really good. But it's kind of the same thing as a. Uh, oh, yeah, whatever. We're in a new match, let's go. That burst, though? <laughs> oh, this is. Okay. I think I must have just gotten this. But see what I was talking about with the 3C thing? All you have to do is just either walk backwards or stand straight up, and 3C will whiff no matter who you are. Because Taker has one of the biggest hurt boxes around. So that's, you know, just the proof. Oh, bad reaction. 
<laughs> this is why I downloaded it. Take a mirror match. Not because the people are particularly amazing. Never? Never? Ev ever? So, like... Gadget Finger against Tager is just a terrible idea to begin with. Actually, less so. You know what? That it may. Oh, that didn't actually combo. Wow. We're getting into the godlike mind games now. 720. Damn it. Um, Magnetech Wheel would have beaten neither one. By the way, Magnetech actually now because 360A actually used to beat Magnetech Wheel, but. There is, I would assume there's enough of a gap in 360B. Because it doesn't seem like it has similar properties to 360A outside of the fact that it has, like, delayed invincibility. But the invincibility doesn't seem anywhere near as strong. So you used to actually be able to, like, that was actually one of Tager's best options. If you did Gadget Finger, it was 360A. Because it would beat any reversals, whether, whether it was 720, um... I think it beats their own 360A. I actually can't remember that one, but I know it beats Magnetech Wheel and it beats 720. But yeah, but I was gonna say, um, it may not actually be a terrible idea now to use Gadget Finger against Tager because of that increased distance. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I wouldn't use it personally because it is a rock paper scissors game where you're against somebody with the same exact options. And so, like, they can they can definitely beat anything that you throw out. And you never, I mean, that's, you never want to give yourself randomness. You want to make the other player guess. You don't want to have to guess yourself. And that's essentially what using Gadget Finger against another Tager presents you. Damn. That was... You can hit off of that? I didn't know you could actually combo off of that. I wonder if it could have been extended further. It just... Because, like, I, now that I understand how Mai works in the sense that... Like, the majority of her chains are just... Like, set in stone. So you have, like, 5 CCC. That guy, what the fuck? Um... Actually, did he just... I wonder if he just gave up. You think he's just holding forward? No, he's blocking he got perfect at the first time, right? So I kind of thought maybe they had just given up. But yeah, that was kind of boring. <laughs> nice. Well, that was a worthwhile match. But I still think, like, watching my in action looks like she's really fun. But understanding that, you know, all the moves that she is using aren't actually moves that are available to her all the time, that you have to go through a chain of normals in order to get them. That kind of thing is just... She looks like she'd be fun to play, but I don't, I don't think she would actually be fun to play. I don't know. I mean, she's definitely the most used DLC character. Online, in fact, she might actually be the most used new character. Because I'm actually, I'm legitimately surprised that I have not seen more nines. Just because people usually tend to really gravitate toward very strong and very easy to use. Although, it kind of makes sense because Mai is very, very strong and even easier to use against people that haven't sat down and learned her as a character. Because she did have that snap judgment going on where like, oh this character's overpowered, she's so broken, pay to win, etc, etc, and then after like a week everybody calmed down and was like, never mind, she's not that good. But a lot of people still think she is very, very strong, and I think those are the people that just haven't really learned her. To I'm so confused what he's trying to bait out. Because Amani doesn't have a reversal, so like... Yeah, the jump canceling into barrier stuff. Oh my god, he got a fatal counter and confirm it. That should be death, though. Fuck. 
fucked up. You fucked up. Oh, that's a fucking bummer. Because that was a crouching confirm, so I think all he probably would have had to do was confirm into the upwards punch through the aerial chain DP finisher, and that should have been enough damage, and if not, he probably would have had meter to rapid cancel at some point and then get the last bit of damage in that manner. But instead, he went for that DP whiff thing, which, I mean, not really the whiff, but, like, you don't do the follow-up and you fall to the ground. And then you can, uh, once you hit the ground, you can follow it up. Yeah, this is, this is such an awkward match. I don't really know how to describe it. Like, I think the Naoto has no idea what to do about Amane. Because he's just so hesitant in general. Which is exactly the opposite of how you should play Naoto. He's throwing more overheads too, I think. Because this Amane seems to really kind of just sit there, down back everything. Like, this Naoto's gone for about three or four throw uh, baits. With, I think it's 5B. Is that aerial kick move? And the Amane hasn't gone for a single one of them. I can't believe that just dodged. Clearly, I need to play Naoto to handle my hatred of Exceed Excel, so when I see somebody do Overdrive, I can just throw out that move and go through it. It's actually weird. That's the second character now they've given Berserker Slash. First, they gave it to Kagura in the form of a special move. Now, they gave it to Naoto. Nice, okay. We looking like a real Azrael right now. It's one way you can tell how high level. I mean, it's not a definitive thing, but you can definitely get an idea of just how strong an Azrael is based off of whether or not they land those 6C confirms against an aerial opponent. Because a lot of people will just, unless it fatal counters, and sometimes even if it fatal counters, that dude is destroyed. Even if it fatal counters sometimes, a lot of Azreels will not confirm 6C. It's just, for them, it's like an alternative uh, Gustav. And so when you see an Azreel confirm it, that's, you know... They're looking pretty good. And then he not only did he confirm it, but he went into a mid-screen uh, weak point after confirming into Rekka's. That hurts so much. Mine, this is off of what? This is off of 2A? Questions you might have had about whether or not this motherfucker is real, god damn called out! All oh, that hurts to see! We're saving that one! Oops, 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 my bad, my bad. I looked away. I forgot to make open broadcast the software the main. The main source that was open. Well, no, I did, but then I went to Notepad to write down that dude's gamer tag, and I need that timestamp so I know how long it's been. Oh, we gonna get fucked. Never mind. Definitely could have done better. I mean, not a lot better, since he did have he didn't have much time. So I guess if your goal was, I don't know, because Exceed Excels do scale so horrendously. Like if you put anything in front of it, it scales like a motherfucker. <laughs> oh man, he's gotta learn his timing. If he had properly uh, timed that, he would have gotten a whole new combo instead of blue beating both of those hits. And also, he wouldn't have lost corner control. See, same thing right there. Oh, that was that. That might have been like a legitimate reset setup, though. He might live. Not anymore. Now, when you throw out the DP. That's actually one big advantage to having a jump in like Kabiki's JC. It covers so much ground that you can definitely kind of get in a range where you will dodge DP uh, hitboxes and still be able to put them in block stun if they don't do it. So if they throw it out, you just, what the fuck was that? I'm not actually sure what that move was. If he had whiff punished that, I would have lost my shit. This 
hopped over it. He just bunny hopped the sword, didn't give a shit. Agile little ninja right there. I should probably just delete this one. I should I should probably pay more attention to gamer tags. Cause uh I remember this Susano and I've been not terribly impressed. And you know, you wanna watch if you're trying to learn something about a character, you wanna watch the highest level possible. And if you watch somebody and you're just kinda like, hey, you know, whatever. Then they're probably not really ultimately worth watching. There you go. Throw it. Aw, oh, didn't do it. Didn't do it. I was waiting for the exceeding, so. Oh, they got active flow anyway. Because they've been running the train on this dude the entire time. Ooh, the dropped combo. That's gonna hurt. Actually giving him real offense. Let's see if they can run it back. I don't think they were prepared for the uh, staff coming back and putting in the block stun. So I think they got, they tried to put like, they may have tried to do two buttons. Um, you know, like, so one to kind of counter with their setup, and then the next one would continue the chain that they can confirm into. And the first button got eaten by block stun, and then the second one came out and they got counter hit. That is what I would assume would have happened right there. That was so good. You can never roll in the corner. This dude really, like, almost every star. Actually, I think every single time he's gotten a combo starter has been off of a throw, except for off of that accidental combo drop that they got to punish the DP on. Everything else has been a pro starter. That looks like it actually probably could have been confirmed. Don't know. Attempted burst bait. Maybe they just knew the combo wasn't going to end well for them. I don't know, but this is a lot of fucked up confirms that should have been the round. They did it. <laughs> I think I would have tried to wait for the rapid cancel. Because you know, like that move is very unsafe. You don't, you can't just throw it out. Like you don't get to run pressure off of it. Um, can't let them just. It should be death. See, it is punishable, and so obviously they're gonna rapid cancel it themselves. And if they don't, you get to kill them for it. And if they do, then you get to eat 50 meter, and you kind of, and then you would throw that out. So then you took 50 of their meter. So that's something you should try to learn, kind of a lot. Like I love it every single time when I'm Tager. And so I mean, now granted, it's actually a bit of a different scenario because Tager has a lot of things that he can do after Magnetech Wheel, Rapid Cancel, that you can use the invincibility to actually straight up beat an attempted uh, Alpha Counter. Whereas Susano doesn't really have that option. But I love it when people use that against me. Because then I get to save 50 meter for later. Hello, phone. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. It started out so well. Look at 6A, would not have... Wouldn't really use that myself, but... This dude's doing, there you go. This guy has absolute, what are you doing? What are you doing? He would have fallen all the way to the ground off of that, he could have waited. This match is so... Woo! Very skeptical. But you can see the Ragnar keeps alternating. Like, they're not trying to react to anything. They're just alternating between high blocking and low blocking. So 
because Asriel should be taking advantage of that. But unfortunately, they got called the hell out. Taken to the corner. That was... That was actually nice on the Ragnus part. Why? Why would you ever back off? I mean, the only thing I can think of is that he's trying to hard call out DP to make it whiff. This has to be... Okay, I'm, I'm calling lag. This must have been laggy. Like, there's just so much oddness in terms of what they're dropping and where they're dropping it. I don't know. But that was just a very, very awkward match all around. Bailey, like, if you're going to try to... Like, because the thing is, obviously, if you block a DP, they get to... Um, they get to rapid cancel it, and then they can, you know, potentially block or use that to escape, whatever. So I understand, you know, like, trying to avoid it so they can't rapid cancel. But the majority of the cast can low profile Azrael's DP. And so that is a big reason why it's not fantastic. It just doesn't have the hitbox like Inferno Divider does or like Naoto's DP does. And so it's far better to try, like, I think a lot of people would, it would be very uh, beneficial if you went and you kind of just set the, uh, set the AI to utilize DP and then work on trying to, uh, low profile it. Learn what moves will make it with. And then you can just follow behind them and punish them. Then you'll be able to rapid cancel ship spark bolted, you would've gotten corner. That's a big thing I need to work on myself, so that's why I'm kind of noticing it. Is often when you don't have magnetism and you use a move, you use anything really. Um, but like confirming into 3C, I almost always will just, if they're not magnetized, I'll pretty much immediately go into Gadget Finger, even if I have Spark Bolt. And need to be using Spark Bolt. Wake up. I don't know what he's trying to go for, but it's... You can't really counterpoke Naoto's pressure. Like, he's designed inherently to frame trap the hell out of you. First? Oh, no, he won the first round. I thought the Naoto won. I'm paying attention. The last couple of matches have been a little eh. And that always makes me tune out a bit. So I apologize for the fact that I have tuned out a bit. Nope, yep, that's that's the Chrono Phantasma combo. Better fucking overdrive, dude. He's not gonna overdrive and he didn't rapid cancel! Oh! Whenever something like that happens, whenever I see somebody do something specifically where they should have won the round, that should have been the end of it right there, right at that moment, I don't care which character either player is using, I don't care who I was rooting for beforehand, when I see something like that, I want them to lose. 100% of the time. I don't care if the other person is using Hazem. They can be my biggest nemesis, and I will always root for them over the person that should have finished the round, but didn't. Woo! Get called out! He did it again! That was a nice little stutter step. That was a bit too obvious, too. Oh, she'd whiff punish that. 
Lost my shit! But it's okay, I had rock anyway. What are you doing? You can't give up chances like that! Nice. Oh, I, I would have actually, see, I probably would have dropped that right there. Because I would have called that as being out of 6A's range when they're not magnetized. Where's the stutter? Oh. That was a failed attempt at rapid 360B. This dude's really bad with Sparkle. Really, really bad. And that is just something that you cannot be. Yeah, like, what was that? Not even magnetized. I actually forgot about that mechanic. I completely forgot. Did they put... I can't remember if that was a Chrono Phantasma thing or if that was a Chrono... I think it was a Chrono Phantasma Extend thing. But they added it so that Tager actually gets armor on his drive moves while he is in overdrive. And I... Right until I saw that, because I think that might be the first time I've ever seen it come into play in a match. That's why I'd completely forgotten that existed. I like that, it's actually pretty dirty. Because that 6C is about as meaty as you can get. If you wrap it, I mean, it's, uh, you're taking a risk, but you're a Tiger player, you're used to that. Oops. That was really, ha! <laughs> I don't know why my throat hurts, but it does, and now it's causing voice cracking. <laughs> Oh, nice 720, dog. I don't know if that's actually what it was, but like, who would ever use overdrive into a move as slow as 5C? But he didn't have the meter. Oh. But this Susano spacing was really good. Like, on that first wake up, he stood right outside of the effective either 360A or 360B range to start his pressure. Only a meter to wrap up against that. Oh no. Oh no. Don't DP again. What is this combo? It was so ugly. I cannot believe that was a purple throw. He had a lot of time to land after the JA. I'm gonna assume that was an astral attempt. It wasn't. There's 0% chance it was. But still, for my own shits and giggles, because the last one was a failed 720 attempt, I'm gonna say that one was failed astral. Oh, you're dead! JD is whole. Maybe not anymore, because he's gotten some pretty crafty Fatal Counter combos lately, but JD used to be his best starter. I can't believe he went for it anyway. I can't believe that hit. He clipped Tager's toenails with that one. Actually, does he even have real feet anymore? Because those don't really look like... Ah, no, they do kind of look like boots. But it's just, you know, somebody Tager's size, you'd think he'd have bigger feet. You're reading too much into it. It's the second time I've seen somebody go for that combo, and this is a different person. But both times it's blue beaded. I can't believe that Tager won that. I legitimately feel like that Tager was the worst player. The wheel of fate is turning. 
<laughs> Man, I love Bang as a character. I mean, he was the first character I ever... No, he wasn't the first character I ever picked. The second character I ever picked in Blaze Blue. I love this character. But... It's been so long since I've actively paid attention to him. And since... I mean, really, Dora's the only... There's a couple other Bangs in Japan, but they're not really very... Prolific. Like, they're not around that much. You I mean, you see them and they have, like, really high rank. So obviously they're very good, but you just don't see them as often. Dora's pretty much the only one that you see on a consistent basis. And so I kind of, I really have very little understanding of the character anymore. I've always liked him. I've always liked his play style. I've liked his move set. His movement. All of it. I've just never taken the time to learn. As I have mentioned numerous times before, there are many other characters as well that I absolutely enjoy playing and I just haven't gotten around to. Full me it have been Guilty Gear and then Blaze Blue that became the big fighting games instead of Street Fighter. And I could have made a living off of this? I wouldn't have. <laughs> I don't have... I mean, put purely and simply... Oh, you gotta punish that, son? I don't have the patience to practice the things you need to practice in order to gain total mastery. Which you need if you're gonna compete at a high level in any way. I think that would have even killed anyone. It would have been very close. Like, because I don't think... So if you are not aware of how that distortion works, of how his normal distortion... Um, any move you have unlocked, it will perform a, like, a single hit representing that move throughout the entire distortion before it gets to the end and then it throws out that beam. Um, I can't remember if you need to have them unlocked in over... I believe you have to have at least one level unlocked in overdrive in order for it to show up, even though technically in overdrive you have everything unlocked to its maximum level for the distortion's purposes. I think you still have to have it unlocked in order to get it to show up and give you that extra damage. So because he had so few moves unlocked, I don't think that would have killed, but I'm not 100% sure if I am recalling how that move works correctly. Nice. Interrupt! I definitely think that should have been uh, an overdrive cancel. Because if he had used overdrive, he would have pushed all the way to the corner. And now that's kind of a waste. With the correct combo, he would have unlocked a lot more and he would have pushed all the way to the corner, had corner control. And I cannot... not emphasize enough how important it is to get the corner and maintain. Like right now, it's just, he gave up that one shot and ever since then he's been kind of struggling. He's not a teleport on that one. Oh, he's dead! I take it all back, he just got fucked up! It feels like every time I'm hyping somebody up, and like, ah, uh, now they're just running a train on them, no problem, whatever. The person that I'm hyping up throws out a DP and they throw away the game with it. Is his... Because I want to say, I think his command grab rapid cancel is the best damage that he gets from combos. Was that maybe, did he try to throw tech? That was really shit damage though off of a counter hit. Seems like it would be a really good starter. Nah. Did every single one of the hits of that DP blue beat? That's kind of funny. Yeah. 
and drives all around. Everybody loves it so much. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm the only person who's just too damn stubborn to spam the hell out of Overdrive. see it here to throw the no because he didn't put so that was my uh, question I was just paying attention for the second hit see how that really didn't do that much damage overall um I was just waiting to see if he did the animation for the DP because that's probably one of the easiest ones to see and he did not throw it out so it's still you still have to have it unlocked I know well I shouldn't say that I know this is my problem, is like, I hear things, and then I feel like I'm remembering them correctly, but I'm not 100% positive on that, and so I kind of, I'm a little iffy on the information a lot of the time, but I believe each one of those moves will also, like, the versions of the moves that can be leveled up, do they get strengthened in that distortion? I don't think they do, but part of me, like, the back of my brain is saying, yeah, they, they're, they get a little bit stronger depending on the level and if you're in overdrive as long as you have it unlocked it acts like it's maxed out. but that might be some confusion to do with the fact that um just pause this so i'm not just talking over this entire match because the first his 236a because you have that unlocked from the get-go it actually won't show up in that distortion unless it's at least level two you have to have leveled it up once to get it to show up in the distortion if it's level one it won't so I might just be mixing that up with the thought that having the moves leveled up also gives it a beneficial effect. I don't know. He tried to chase him down. He did chase him down. He dropped it. That was so pretty. And he fucked it all up. This is the kind of thing that you're kind of watching, like, it seems like there might be lag, but he's in a replay, you can't tell. He doesn't simulate the delay or anything, but with how, you know, again, the kind of shit that's being dropped, and kind of oddities and movement and neutral actions, it seems a little bit like there might be lag involved. I know it has pretty good minimum damage. Yeah, it does. It's good. Oh, how did you get counter hit? Wonder if maybe his input got crossed up. That's so dirty. See, I feel like that right there, if you see Hazma going to that stance, could he have killed? That's a really, I think if he had a weak point, he would have been able to rapid cancel overdrive and then kill him in that manner, but because he didn't have a 100 meter, I don't think he would have killed if he had rapid canceled that DP. Because his DP is a terrible starter. You don't get much damage off of it. And so if he either had a hundred meter, if he had a, at least one weak point, I think he could have killed. Him. But without, but without either, he did not have. Oh, how did you? I would have just immediately uh, distortioned that just to make sure that he didn't get a burst off. Nope. I thought he was gonna recover in time because that was pretty deep in the animation. All that fucking work for 2K. <laughs> I mean, I guess he was right in Azrael's face the entire time, so he also got the uh, health drain. Which I don't know what how much it drains per second.
I, just, I feel like every single time you see him go in that stance, you should DP. Because the I mean, it would be something that I would have to figure out definitively. Um, because the possibility is that he might be able to do the backdash animation for it and make the DP with. But I feel like because of how kind of tall Hazuma is in general, you might be able to clip his head if he does use that. The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel one. Action. All right. Every single time I have seen a green Azrael, the green coated Azrael, not the actual Frankenstein colored Azrael. Frankenstein's monsters. God, haven't you read the book? Um, they started out strong. They fuck up once and they get annihilated every single time. But this time he's just getting completely outplayed. <sighs> okay, now I don't know if this person's trolling. What's going on? But one thing, so you saw the 6C rapid cancel. Not very good. Because you, you're definitively in the air at that point. And there's not exact it's not like, oh god, I have a quarter of a second to determine where he's going to, whether or not he's going to land or whether or not he's going to stay in the air, because he has to air dash at that point. Versus 3C Rapid Cancel, which I don't see anybody do anymore. It is basically an instant overhead. You don't have to air dash first. Um, or, if somebody's kind of expecting that, you can Rapid Cancel it and land and go for a 2A, and that is also ridiculously fast and impossible to react to. Both scenarios are imp impossible to react to. You just have to guess which one they're going to go for. But I just don't see anybody do it anymore. But that's like the... I'm seeing the 6C Rapid cancel at least somewhat frequently. And it's just not a very strong mix-up. Mickey might have been able to 5A that. This is a really sloppy match overall. That's the word I've been looking for this entire time. I just I knew it started with an S, but I couldn't remember specifically what it was. And sloppy was the word I was looking for. Oh, this has gone on for 43 minutes. I haven't been paying attention. I think I fell asleep for 15 minutes in the middle of that. Confirmed. Did I just stop talking for 15 minutes? <laughs> there were just those middle matches looked so bad that I just kind of toned out. I really don't understand. Like, the more I see this Hagane Niku dude play, the less I understand how they got at least a decently high rank. Is that damage though? That was so sick! Doesn't the doll- oh, I guess he was waiting for the doll to- that's actually smart. I would say the doll being full is a more significant resource than Spark Bolt. I can't believe you got hit by that. I legitimately am surprised this Relius player did not see that coming. Because that was like the first possible instant they could have thrown that out. Woo! You think they knew that was the right way to tech to avoid that setup, or do you think they just got luck? Rally is going nuts. Where's the oh. Where's the anti air sun? See, that's kind of how it works. I feel like he's trying to bait out the spark bolt, but like. There it is. 
but almost all the time, you see it. It's it's a really big mind game on your own, both of your parts, on the opponent and the Tiger player, when you're going to throw Spark Bolt. And it kind of feels like most players either, they just throw it immediately, because they're impatient, or like they want magnetism so they can actually do something, all this, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or alternatively, they refuse to throw it, so they constantly have that threat there. And so that's kind of, you know, his first uh, two, he just threw out immediately. And so the third one now, okay, I'm going to be patient with this one. And I think they'll be expecting it, that kind of thing. It's hard to play mind games with people. I can't believe a Noel just pressured a Tager to do Exceed Excel. Four seconds into the match. Could he? I'm curious how uh, the interaction between Tager, Spark Bolt, and that last missile. Alternatively, if he could have just. Doing most of the Tager players, like, because there's not a lot of them, so I'm starting to kind of recognize their gamer tags in general, and most of them are just not impressive, and they make very questionable, like, not even necessarily decisions. They just drop tons of shit. Which I know is somewhat ironic of me to say, of all people, but still. I want to watch other players to improve by self, and if I'm just seeing them make the same mistakes as I do, it's not particularly beneficial. We are at 46 minutes now, aren't we? 47? I should have started a new video, but I am... I'm tired. What else is new? This is kind of why I haven't been playing much, I'm just... NFL playoff season, man. For me, that means a lot of hours at work. And I have been very, very fatigued, thanks to it. And it's definitely one of the worst aspects of fighting games in general, is like, you pretty much have to be at your best if you don't want to just get fucking bopped the entire time. That, I wonder if that was a, an attempted sparkle. That definitely should have been. Counter hit 5D, you have all day to kick confirm that with Sparkle. Bring him back in. Potentially run the entire round back. And they can do it now, depending on their choices. See, I, I feel like that could be... That was a terrible option. I feel like... Well, maybe you might have to... Based on the timing of it, you might have to, like, trade. So I was thinking throwing a Sparkle while she's still falling out of the air. But to throw it in time, you might actually have to basically throw it right when the missile is hitting you, which obviously that's not an option. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I didn't need as much damage as I thought. Also, the more I see it, because I've used it a few times myself, and I was kind of just like, alright, I'm never going to use this again. Get active? No, it didn't. You got it. Nice call-out. I think that's the third time I've seen them go for an anti-air call-out, and they failed every single time. And now, <laughs> now they go for the not anti-air call-out, and they get fucked up by the airborne move. That's funny. Can't remember what I was going to say. Sorry! <laughs> 